Well, this is my life now. In Toby's life, they actually, they started to quiet down. So I was able to turn the camera on. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? You're not gonna get the camera strap. I hope you're doing well. I am great. You're sniffing. Is it time to go out? I think it might be time to go out. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Off to a great start. Hey, Toby. Good boy, Toby. It, what are you, what you doing? What you doing down there, Turbo? Hey, Turbo, why don't you sit? Show everybody how you sit. Good sit, good boy. Good boy, I know, I need to take the strap off this thing. Just show everybody how you can sit. Good sit, good boy. Good boy, you weren't supposed to stand up. That's not how we do things. I don't know how much training I'll be doing with the camera because it's something that should be focused for. You sat again, good boy. I didn't ask you to though. I don't normally do vlogs on Wednesdays. That's pretty much a Saturday thing, but it's just, it's, it's my life right now, it's, I, I don't, I don't have time to do like formal videos. You're a full-time puppy, aren't you, Turbo? Yes, you are. He's very good though, but I think that that's because I spend so much time like watching him and training with him. Orchid's still blooming, looking pretty. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yes, I washed my face in the kitchen this morning. I slept in just a little bit late, by a little bit late, I mean like, seven o'clock instead of six o'clock. So I woke up and I was like, oh, I need to get downstairs and take care of the puppy. I grabbed my face wash and ran downstairs. So brushed my teeth first, then wash. It doesn't matter, nobody cares. No real plan for the video. I have some new plants I thought would be fun to talk about that I've been holding on to for just like a week or so. Maybe I might try and get them planted this week. I don't know, because here's the thing. It's supposed to be in the upper 90s for the next several days and extremely humid, but next week it's gonna be in the low 80s. So would, wouldn't you probably just wait if it were you? I mean, it seems like a good idea to me. Toby, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. You're so good with Turbo. I was brushing my teeth this morning and I heard a clatter and I looked down, he went running out of the bathroom with the toilet brush in his mouth. Um, he just went down the steps for the very first time and I missed it by half a second with the camera. He can go up, I'm no problem getting down. He's been nervous, which is, I'm so happy that he came down the stairs because hopefully that means we'll be able to start getting him into the pool. Right now I have to put him in the pool and which is fine, but I feel like he would have more fun because he whines like he wants to get in when he's more confident being able to get into the water. Yeah, go to the grass, go potty. Go on, go potty. Don't, don't, don't walk under there. Don't do it. A few days ago, Toby was out here doing his thing and Turbo just ran right underneath him and I had to give Turbo a bath because he ran right through Toby's pee. Why? These are, oh, they're getting so pretty. All right, come on, Turbo. Come on, it's time to go back to Turbo Town. You need to clean up your water. You'd rather go over there? All right, you can go hang out with the clearance shrubs. Don't eat them, no. Good boy. There's literally, there's a pathway right here. Why did you? <sighs> okay, well, I'm going to gather up those plants, <laughs> clean up their water, and we can look at some fun new plants. Hopefully soon, just a minute, just as long as it doesn't get too hot. Oh, look who's in the baby pool. Good boy, Turbo. I initially set that up once so he'd have some water to drink while he's out here, and to familiarize him with just water in general, you know, because of all of that over there. This is the first time I have actually seen him get in there all the way to grab one of his toys out of there. So that's good, that's progress. A few days ago, he did crawl into the top step on his own. I didn't have to coax him or anything. Toby was in there swimming and he was like, uh oh, I gotta be near my Toby. Gotta get in there and he figured it out, but that's the only other time I've seen him voluntarily get into the waters. He did a little swim. Not really a swim, a nice, what, what would we call that? Wade, nice wade, good job wading. Okay, lots of puppy stuff been going on. I have some plants here. I tried to make it look nice, but with the gate and everything and the needing to keep him away from the plants, even though almost everything in here is non-toxic, it's still, I don't want him chewing on it. And it's just, it's just, that doesn't look very pretty. I'm gonna work on this some more. <laughs> so it's not such an eyesore to look at. Take the lens cap off, that might help. Doing it again. Do it again, good boy Turbo, get your ball. Get that ball, good boy. It's so fun every day seeing them learn and explore new things, as long as it's not destructive. Watching them figure things out is fun. I'm not really sure where he's trying to dig to. Maybe it's because his other toy had sunk to the bottom. Where he 
Where's he trying to go? Maybe put this back in there. Oh. Is he gonna get it? You gonna get it, Turbo? You gonna get it? You gonna get that toy? <laughs> Good boy, water's fun, right, Turbo? You gonna get it? You gonna get that toy? Look at you making so much progress. I did, I did too. I don't know what to being comfortable with the water. It's not like playing in the water was urgent or pertinent, or anything like that. But it's just, it's so nice, so nice to see you having fun and connecting the dots and figuring things out. Next thing we know, he's gonna be running out that door right there and going right into the pool, which is fine. Swimming's great for him. Good exercise helps keep him cool. Good cardio with less impact on those joints. You gonna get the toys? Can you get those toys? or just keep splashing around. I don't even know if he's interested in the toys. I think maybe he was just having fun splashing. You having fun splashing? You good little swimmer, aren't you, Turbo? This thing, this part of my tripod, this has been driving me bonkers for the last several weeks. And it's one of those things where I just keep forgetting to come in and just tighten it up. So simple. There we go. What you love when you remember to just get those little things done? Is that stable now? Yes. Finally. Okay, now we can talk plants. Man, he's so distracting. I love him so much. It can be so hard to focus though when you've got this like floppy ball of adorableness around. All right, so here it is. I picked up four different plants last week, all of which are plants that I've been looking forward to and trying to find for a few years now. The first one up here is a Clethra. Clethra onifolia ruby spice. They have pink flowers with a white center. I'll try to get some close-ups and put those up here on the screen. But you know, right now we're doing the whole entire puppy thing over here. So I have a little bit of a block. I'm sorry, Blade. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I should also mention, I have always referred to these as Clethras. Monrovia's website says the pronunciation is Clethra. Missouri Botanical Gardens says Clethra. Potato, potato, these are summer sweets. They're native to much of the US super hardy all the way down to zone three. These are shrubs that have a lot going for them. And okay, all right. Let's not chew on the tripod. That's not a good idea. The summer sweets are great deciduous shrubs. They flower around midsummer with these fun spires that come up. Like I said, I'll try and get some close-ups for everybody. And they are highly, highly fragrant. They smell so fantastic. It's a kind of a spicy vanilla-y type of scent and I, you can smell it from fairly far away. Usually throughout the day too, it's not one of those plants where it's just in the morning or at evening, though it does seem to be strongest in the early morning and in the evening. Still, like right now, I think it's probably 10 or 11 o'clock by now and I can still smell it. Usually still smell it throughout the entire day. Their foliage is kind of a deep glossy green. That one's more on the yellow side. The nursery that I picked these up from had them sitting in full blazing sun, which is okay for these plants as long as they are never let to dry out. The summer sweets do prefer more of a moist to even boggy type of soil. But like I said, they don't have to have that, but they're going to look their best with consistent moisture around those fruits. So I'm thinking that perhaps the more yellow tone that this one has going on its foliage is because it was getting some more sun than this one right here. This one was on the very front of the display and this one was tucked away and it was more hidden underneath some things. I say yellow, it's a light green. It doesn't seem like it's any type of nitrogen deficiency or anything of the sort. So it could be, you see how tiny the pots are that these are in? Which I know we would normally go, oh, this plant should be in a bigger container. However, that's a smaller hole for me to dig. So I'm okay with it. These will pop into the ground so quickly and easily. I am going to hold off though, probably until fall to get these in the ground. This variety right here is the Ruby Spice. This will get anywhere from six to eight feet tall, though it's going to take them a while. They're not the fastest growers and the same spread on them. They respond fine to pruning in the late winter, early spring, kind of like with a hydrangea. Right before the leaves start to fully flush up, you can see them just kind of plumping up from along the sides of the stems. They can take a prune at that time and it's not going to affect their flowering because they bloom on new wood. I really don't plan on doing much pruning with these. I just want to plant them up and let them go wild and do their thing. If you hear me giggling, it's because I keep, I have the puppies down here by my side playing with Toby and making really weird sounds and bumping the tripod around. These are deciduous. I don't know if I mentioned that with beautiful fall coloring, anywhere from a bright yellow to more of a yellowy brown 
tone to it. They look nice that cooler time of year when those leaves start to fade off. And lastly, one of the other things that I absolutely love about the summer sweets is that these are a plant that will flower in the shade to the sun. Again, the more light they get, the more consistent water. That's really, really important. But I have a lot of spots that just get some bright filtered morning light and then it's pretty dark and shaded throughout the rest of the day and the soil's pretty boggy in some areas where there's some, you guys have probably seen if you watch my other videos, some boggy areas where these will do very, very well. It's not always that easy to find shrubs that will flower reliably in the shade, right? So for best flowering and best growth, I do still wanna make sure that they're in a spot that's more along the part shade area. They're going to need some morning sun to keep them looking nice and having a nice habit to them, but they are totally something you can put in a darker spot in the garden and still get some flowers out of them. There are three different varieties that I've been trying to get a hold of over the years. The Ruby Spice is the one that I've been looking for the most because I love the pink flowers on them. I okay, dogs. As I was saying, the Ruby Spice, very pretty, pink flowers with a white center. And then there is one that I believe is called Vanilla Spice from Proven Winners and one that's called Sugar Tina Crystallina from Proven Winners. I have an area in the garden where I've planted a bunch of impatience. It's soil that is fairly moist, but further down, up high, it's not so wet but just down low, I've been working some gypsum and trying to get that drainage improved over the years. And uh, these are what I've wanted to plant in that area. I've wanted to have a mix of the Ruby Spice with those Sugar Tinas. The Sugar Tina, those stay smaller, 30 to 36 inches. They have much more of a compact growth to them. And they have long, white, wispy flowers on them. And I thought that that would mix in very well with these. And it's just, it's going to be so fragrant. If I can get a hold of those Sugar Tinas, that is, those will be down low staggered in with these up higher. If they're hardiness, these would be a good candidate for a shrub that you could keep in a pot in most places. I'm in zone six. These are hardy all the way down into zone three. So a harsh winter, probably not going to affect these at all, as long as they need to be watered in the winter time. It's important to remember that with potted shrubs that are outside, they will still need a drink, but these could be tucked into different spaces where I want some fragrance. I talk very frequently about how much I love to have a lot of fragrance outside in my garden. These bring it. They smell fantastic and you can smell it from pretty far away too. Just the two shrubs, I can smell them almost all the way across the patio on the other side of the yard. Oh, and non-toxic. So not something I have to worry about with the new puppy. I would still prefer that he doesn't chew on my plants, but it's listed across most sites as being safe to have around the animals. So the summer sweets, I'm super excited about. So happy to have found at least these two. They had five of them and I almost bought them all because the price was really good, especially considering how large these are. Like I said, they're not the fastest growers. So getting them in a large size like this, I, I see it occasionally, but they're not usually a variety that I want to grow. The pollinators love these plants so, so, so much that I only got the two because the others, they, they had too many bees on them. I didn't really want my grill up in the plant trying to get them into the car with the number of bees on them. I try to plant as many things as I can for the pollinators, especially as far as perennials are concerned. But as you know, I don't necessarily want them stuck in the car with me for a 20 minute drive. That's a little bit different. Out of any shrub I've ever grown or planted for other people and had them grow, really, I haven't had any in my yard. But these get covered with more pollinators than anything else I've ever planted. At some point, I'm gonna scoot these a little bit further over where they're not quite so close to the fan and to set the fan up so it blows on the camera to help keep it from overheating. I don't think there's ever a point when I look at these plants and there's not at least three or four bees on them and butterflies come and go. They're just, they're fantastic plants. They're really pretty and I'm super excited about them. There it is, Ruby Spice Summer Sweets. These are a plant that, I don't wanna call them a bucket list plant, but they kind of are. Cause it's been several years, I've been trying to get a hold of some nice sized ones. So there's something that I definitely want to have planted all over the garden. Their fragrance, it's just so phenomenal. And when they first flush out with their flowers, very pretty. As much as I do love the pink flowers that are on these, the white ones, just the regular onifolias, they do have a more contrasting flower on them that does stand out some more and it may be a little bit prettier, but I think the pink is quite nice as well. There's something just pretty and cute about it. Since these can take a decent amount of shade, I also, those crystallinas, the sugar tinas, ones that stay 30 to 36 inches, if I can ever get my hands on enough of them, what I've wanted to do with those is get them planted all up along this hillside here, just a strong hedge of them. I may even go ahead and order some since they'll come in smaller pots 
and just be patient and wait for them to grow because it's really hard to dig up there. So smaller pots might be better, but just having this filled up there in the foreground with those highly fragrant flowers, you step outside to this backyard, it's just going to smell phenomenal. So that would be amazing. So just with these two plants, you can smell them all over the place. So ultimately, I want to get some more of these to get planted up, like I said, with the impatience the smaller varieties up there on the hill. And I would like to even have some more since they're hardy down in zone three, they'll do fine in pots during the winter and have those placed around the garden strategically to let off that fragrance. It's going to smell so good out here. Gonna be a lot of bees though. If you're allergic to bees, probably this will probably won't be a great backyard to hang out in. Although it is mostly honeybees. I have never really had an issue with the honeybees. Have you? They We seem to have like an understanding. They leave me alone. I leave them alone. All right. I know I went on about the summer sweets for a pretty long time. My apologies, I just, I absolutely love them, if you couldn't tell. The other plants will not take as long. This is a Summerific Candy Crush Hibiscus, and it was on clearance. Maybe you can, you might be able to see why. It doesn't have a lot going on in its container, just a couple gross. There's one new one coming off the bottom. Summerific Candy Crush, this one's from Proven Winners. I think the Candy Crush had been around for a while. I can't really remember. I don't know if this is one they bought or one they made. That doesn't really matter. These get flowers on them that can be up to eight inches across. They have a beautiful bubblegum pink flower on them with that dark center. I'm not always crazy about the dark center because I feel like that's what separates a hardy hibiscus from a tropical hibiscus, like in the Rose of Sharon's. And then with the Machotos, the deciduous type hibiscus, you usually have that darker eye. So I try and steer clear of that. But the color that's on this flower is so reminiscent to me of the seminal pink hibiscus Rosa sinensis, which is the tropical hibiscus. I was like, well, that's gorgeous and I need to have it, especially for 70% off. Might've been 50% off, I can't remember, but it was a good deal. Easy to grow, deciduous perennials. These will die back in the winter time. Generally leave the woody stems on them until springtime and then I'll cut them. This particular variety gets, I believe it said 48 to 54 inches high and wide. This is one of those newer cultivars that has more of a sturdy growth to it. So this isn't going to be one of those hardy hibiscus where they get covered in great big massive flowers and then these stems start to flop over. That was something that was really common with these in the past, like, you know, even just 10 years ago, that's what a lot of them did. But nowadays, most of them have really nice sturdy growth. They don't get as tall as some of the other varieties, but 48 to 54 inches, that's a good enough size shrub. I mean, woody perennial, but it's going to have a shrubby type shape to it. I am curious to see if these flowers actually will go eight inches in diameter. I, I don't know about that. I would be really impressed to see that. There are multiple accounts online and people saying that they do get that big. So hopefully that's what we get to see here. I doubt that'll happen this year because it's kind of late in the season to go ahead and get these into the ground. I will go ahead and get this planted up here as well, probably next week. It's gonna be pretty hot this week. So this is going to sit in the shade near the drip irrigation. But once things cool off next week, I'll get this into the ground. You can see it's it's potted way, way, way down inside that container. So I don't know if this got bumped and placed back in there or if perhaps that big margin is left in here so that they can get a really, really, really heavy drink because these plants need lots and lots of water. They're a bog type plant. They don't have to go in a bog, but you can. You can throw them into your pond if you wanted to or up along the edge of a pond. They'll do fine with that, but they're okay in the landscape as well. As long as like with the summer sweet, they aren't wet to dry out for too terribly long. The Candy Crush, because of that fun bubblegum pink flower, and like I said, with the resemblance to the seminal pink, but with the dark eye in the center, this is one I've wanted for a long time. So I'm glad that I was able to find one for clearance. I've seen them around. I just didn't want to pay full price for them. Okay, next up. <laughs> I must drop this one. It's a little heavy. It's a chunky little shrub. It's a rose. A beautiful rose. This is one of the Oh So Easy series from Proven Winners. This is the Hot Paprika. This is a smaller, more dainty landscape tile ro tile <laughs> type rose. And see, they have that fine foliage on them. There was the Paprika Oh So Easy rose, and that one gets 12 to 24 inches high by up to 36 inches wide. So that one is going to have more of a carpet type spread on it. Whereas this one goes 12 to 24 inches high by the same width. So this one is going to have more of that rounded, mounted shape to it as opposed to a carpet. The hot paprika not only has a different shape to it, but the flowers start off this really pretty, kind of a creamy orange color. They're really fun, sort of a tropical hint to them, very vibrant. And then those age out into more of a coral, <laughs> pinky type flower. I'm trying to get a shot of the flowers in the shade so you can see what they look like, but you can see I only have like a foot of shade to work with. There they are as they age out 
they have more of this coral hue to them. And they are fragrant, which is something that I absolutely love about most of the Oh So Easy roses. I haven't smelled them all, that's why I say most of them. But with a lot of roses that have been hyper-cultivated, like the knockout type roses, I don't know what they're like now, but back in the day when those first came out, they were beautiful, but they really didn't have much of any fragrance to them. At least none of the ones I ever planted here or for other people. Never really smelled anything on them. Whereas these, I can smell them from all the way over here. And they, they smell like a rose. If you were wondering, it's not a super strong scent, but if these were to be planted in mass, if you were to have a drift of these in the garden, you would definitely smell it. I love having shrubs that do the multicolor flower thing. Things start off a certain way and then blend off into a different color and you get both colors on the plant at the same time. So that's a lot of fun. And these are supposed to bloom continuously. I would assume that they have some sort of latency period, but according to Proven Winter's website, without deadheading, they should bloom summer all the way into fall. And that's going to depend on the light. It's a rose, so this needs a good amount of sun. And I was planning on keeping this one containerized because it's a nice, small size. It's hardy all the way down into zone three, 3A to 9B. So it's one that can handle those harsh winters outside. If you're in zone five, you could put this in a pot during the winter time. Even in zone four, still want to protect it. Heck, I'm in zone six, and I'll still be protecting it just to be safe because the smaller parts of the wood, the fresh wood that hasn't hardened off yet, it's going to be more delicate to a severe cold. We usually have a few days to a few weeks of pretty harsh cold and then the rest of winter is very mild. But again, with that extreme hardiness, I think this is a good candidate for like a porch or a balcony, a deck, something like that because it has a smaller size to it. It's fragrant, pollinators have been all over it. Not going to be much maintenance and they don't need to be deadheaded, which is great. However, I may come in just because I think it would look nicer to go ahead and get those old flower buds cut out of there, it's not necessary to do that. You can go ahead and leave them. It should just keep on doing its thing. In the springtime, these benefit from being cut back by roughly 50%. Just give them a good chop right across the top and then they'll flush out with new growth and be covered in flowers come probably late spring into early summer. It smells so good out here right now. Oh, the honeybees. See the honeybees flying around on there? They're very happy right now. There are honeybees everywhere in the backyard just since I brought those two summer sweets home. They're all over the place. That's always such a nice rewarding thing, isn't it? When we bring plants home or plant something new and just see a rush, just a huge flush, I should say, of butterflies and honeybees all over the plants. The one just like went right for my face. That was a feisty one. Now I do notice it does look like there might be some aphids on one of these stems. So I might have to give that a little bit of a wipe down just across the buds, but I'm going to leave the rest of the plant alone. I'll just probably use a little bit of dish detergent mixed in with some water some soap that is and give those a quick wipe, but I don't want anything else near those flowers because well, you know, pollinators, right? Need to keep this plant nice and clean for them. All right, one more. I'm really excited about this one. Oh, look at that leaf. Isn't that a beautiful leaf? Beautiful leaf on a beautiful plant. This is one that I've talked about on the channel a few times actually about how I've been trying to get my hands on some of these. I only got one, so it's kind of pricey, but this is a Chefleura Taiwaniana silver, no, winged phoenix. Uh, the winged phoenix isn't actually a variety that I was necessarily looking for, but I was like, I'll take it because I've never actually seen them for sale here in St. Louis before. I'll go ahead and give the stats on the plant real quick and then talk about why I'm excited about it. So the Chefleura Taiwaniana. This one is supposed to get 15 feet tall and wide, so the growth rate's moderately fast on it. Hardy zero to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's a zone seven plant. Part shade to full sun and they like their soil to stay evenly moist, but not sopping wet. And it's a Schifflera. The way these need to be grown is gonna be very similar to a Fatsia. I had a Schifflera Taiwaniana years ago. I think I was a teenager and I don't remember what variety it was, if it even was a cultivar. It might've just been a regular Taiwaniana. And uh, it grew fairly quickly, kept it as a house plant. Actually, this will do fine in the house, just like a regular Schifflera would. But I've wanted one of these because of their extreme hardiness. Also, part of my finger, those puppy teeth, I give him a treat and then hit his little puppy teeth go down on there. Sorry, I should have covered that up for the video. My bad. Or maybe just not pointed it out also. Apologies again. These are more common up in the northwest of the U.S. That's where I used to see them when I was a kid up around the Seattle area. And they are a gorgeous shrub slash small tree. They have them listed as a shrub, but I mean 15 feet by 15 feet. I would, that's kind of moving into small tree territory. Come up somewhat vase shaped and they just, they're very graceful. Those leaves have that glossy tinge to them. The winged phoenix, what's supposed to be special about this one, 
from what the website says. This is a Don Hankley plant through Monrovia. They say that the new foliage comes out a very soft light green and then ages to a silvery green. And I don't, I, I, I guess so. It just looks like a green leaf to me, but that's what they say is that it's supposed to be a silvery green. So I don't know. I don't really care to be honest. I just wanted the hardiness aspect of it. I'm in 6B, right on the line of 6A, 6B. So the winters are pretty variable here. This will not be going in the ground. This is going to stay in a pot and I'll be keeping it outside much of the year. There's going to be an extended period of cold where it's just below freezing. Even if it's in the upper 20s, I'll move it in and just tuck it away into my garage. That should be totally fine in there. Chef Laura's are pretty sturdy plants. So as I do with my Akuba japonicas, my Fatsias, my mule palms, my windmill palms, those are all potted plants that I like to have around because it extends the amount of time I have pretty nice foliage outside. Where I live, winters are pretty ugly. We don't get a ton of snow. Most of the trees are deciduous, just the native trees. That is, there are a lot of white pines. I have a whole bunch of those, but those aren't the prettiest pines either. But you know, you take what you can get, right? So in the Adenidia palms and the Heliconias and Eureka palms, those are all moved inside. This is just another fun plant with a good texture that I'll be able to have out here. And I'll have it tucked away probably over here in this area, more than likely until it gets too cold. Then it'll go in. I would imagine I'll probably be able to have this outside again, maybe not this year because it's probably never felt much cold before, but after it's had a few seasons to acclimate, leaving it outside longer and longer and longer every year, I'll probably be able to have this outside, I would think nine to 10 months of the year, which is pretty good. That's not bad. The one that I had when I was a teenager, I do remember whenever it would be near a frosty temperature, anywhere from 28 up to 34 degrees, 35 degrees, even the foliage on them would start to lay down and press down and it would look like the plant was going to die. But then as soon as the temperatures warmed up, it would just whoop, pop right back up. So if this variety does the same thing, then maybe I won't leave it out quite as long because I what's the point if it's going to look sad, like it's dying and just waiting for things to get nice. May as well move it in where it'll be happier, right? I don't know, we will see about that. The only thing that I was on the fence about with this Chef Laura was I was getting a lot of feedback from people who live in the Northwest saying that they weren't sure how well this would handle the summer heat and humidity. Then after talking to some people who are also growing these in the hot Southeast, like down around the Atlantic and the Gulf Coast, from what I'm being told, these are doing well for people in those zones as well. So I figure if it's gonna handle the heat and the humidity down there, it's worth a try up here. We will see. It seems fine so far had it for a week and it's looking pretty good. Doesn't seem to mind the temperatures at all. It's fun and pretty. All the other plants that I showed were really heavy on flowers and pollinators and those sorts of aspects. But with this one, it's all about the texture and the foliage. It's a very graceful looking plant, especially as it gets larger. I'm looking forward to seeing what this does as the years go on. So pretty, I love it so much. I know it's just leaves, but it's, it's got that gracefulness to it. I love it and I like the deep green, which is, Apparently silvery green, I don't know. My eyes, that's just, all I see is deep green. Perhaps as the plant ages and gets more mature, I'll see more of that sheen. Although I suppose when I move the leaves, I can sort of see a silvery sheen. Can y'all see that? Kind of, I don't know, it seems like a stretch. Give it time, watch it grow. Maybe that will be more apparent as the plant matures. Have you had any experience with this? Comment down below, let me know. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. That's gonna do it for the video. Just a few new plants, got some time with the puppy, wanted to go over what's over here and what I'm working with and some things I'm excited, which clearly the thing I'm most excited about are gonna be the summer sweets back there. And I'm excited about all of these plants, but those, it's just, oh, they smell so flippin' fantastic. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great lab and everything's just going fantastic for you. Oh, is it nap time? Time to go to sleep, Turbo? Yeah, I feel you. You've been playing hard. He's been going at it all morning. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put these plants back where they need to go to get through these next few days of really intense heat. Give them another drink, though they've had one. Won't hurt to give them another. I suppose that that is a nice soft fuzzy green, isn't it? And then that lighter green. It's the aging into the silver part. That's what I'd, I said I was gonna go. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.